Welcome to the Council on Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, formerly the Commission on Access, Diversity, and Excellence member spotlight. My name is Robin Perrin. I'm the Assistant Vice President for STEM Education and APLU DEI Officer, and serve as the APLU Lead for the Council of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. Today, I'm joined by Misha Poor, Vice President and Chief Diversity Officer for the West Virginia University. Welcome, Misha, how are you? I'm doing great. Nice to see you, Robin. Always good to see you and wonderful talking to the membership. Great. Well, our first question today is, can you tell us a little more about what you do and what your office does at West Virginia University? Certainly. So I'm the vice president for the Division of Diversity, Equity, Inclusion here at West Virginia University. And to kind of just like bring it all together, and I can go into a long litany, and I will do that with a little bit of explanation. It is a place that helps people find their place. That is what our office does in a kind of a nutshell, right? And so we deal with diversity, equity, inclusion in a lot of different ways. One thing about diversity, it is very fluid. So how do we help you become or belong at West Virginia University? That is our job. And so whether it be that you have a visible or invisible disability, whether it be that you feel as though there needs to be training on bias, some level of what it means to be inclusive as it relates to faculty, staff, and our student, our responsibility is to step in and figure out what will help. So whether it be a program, training, a conversation, we deal with that. We also do education on uh, prevention education. So bystander prevention, how to uh, identify and spot discrimination and harassment. And also, if that is the case, how we might have to do a Title IX uh, investigation. That also falls underneath my umbrella. So there's a large litany of things that, that we deal with each day. Great. So this leads right into the next question. I, you know, you've told us that you do all of these broad things within your office. And I know you're supporting many things and advancing many critical initiatives across your campus. Is there one or two that you'd like to highlight that where you're meeting students and campus needs in unique and impactful ways? Absolutely. So the division actually covers all areas of the campus. So not just our main campus, but we, we do Morgantown, Kaiser, and the Beckley campus. Because we're a land-grant institution, like all of our members, we have a responsibility to the whole entire state and truthfully the globe because we, we create global ambassadors. One of the things I will say as we talk to our students, our faculty, and our staff about how they can be great mountaineers. One of the things I'm excited about is what we call Yappy Hour. Yappy Hour was actually a brainchild of some of our grad assistants. It's in the middle of the pandemic where everybody had cats and dogs kind of coming through the screens. Some of you all may have had that happen to you. And they decided that they realized that people began to be a little bit lighter hearted when they saw animals. So we have some care service animals that we call hearts of gold. And those hearts of gold dogs come out each month and we let them just kind of engage with the students. That's what their job is. So the students get to kind of deal with their stress level, whatever might be missing home, faculty and staff, the same as a lot of things have happened over the last couple of years. We've done that for the full year and a half and they have the campus have absolutely loved it. And so that's one of the things that we, we've enjoyed. The other thing is we started the Let's Talk series. And that's something that comes directly from me, no more than two minutes, each week on a Tuesday, I kind of talk to the campus about let's talk, let's talk about diversity. What does it look like? How can you play a role in it? And that's kind of what we, we're very proud of. Those are just a few things, but those are the quick and easies. That's great. Can I, uh, well, first at Cal Poly, when I was there, we had goats and people ah. would come out and pet the goats. And I know it was a big impact. So I know that um, the dogs are probably loved by everybody on campus. It's a great stress reliever. It is. The, the second thing that you talked about with your, your two minutes on Tuesday, how do you communicate that and disseminate it to the campus community? So we do a couple of things. One, we do the, of course, the virtual. We do the the the, the recording and we put it out each um, each week in our uh, our campus newsletter, and so it comes out digitally to to the campus. The other thing we do is we we are starting the let's talk with. So it's a little bit longer version, uh, a little bit like this, a spotlight of some things that are happening either from our Mountaineer alumni, some people on campus, etc. So it just depends on what the topic is, uh, but we try to get it in a newsletter each week so people can have a little quick and an easy approach to having the discussion and it goes out to the mailing list. Great, those are good tips for our community. So um, one of our next questions is how has or how can the CDEI community support you in the work that you do on your campus? Well, let me just say that, you know, we hear this thing about the ripple effect, 
right? And, and we can't say it enough. You do something, it helps me here. And the truth is, it really does. We are an association of leaders across this country that have an opportunity to truly shift and transform the way that we see one another. And so making certain that you're providing support to your actual chief diversity officer, your vice president of diversity, equity, inclusion, or your senior director that reports maybe to your president, allows your campus to begin to build and mold individuals, whether it be staff, faculty, or student, into being caring and giving individuals that are at least aware of what it means to be uh, a good partners in this space. And so what I will say to you is you doing the work on your campus, you leaning in the conversation, you making sure that if someone's not at the table, you be a voice for that person that's missing from the table, allows me to be able to do my job. And I know that sounds kind of funny, but it's the truth. You do your part and I do my part. Collectively, we do really create global ambassadors. That's fantastic. So when you're thinking about this work in the community that we're building with CDEI, what is something that you're really looking forward to for the next six months or year with our community? Well, first of all, let me say congratulations to APLU and all of its members for this new council. It will definitely be something that I think is appreciated and celebrated for many, many years to come. The first thing I would say is get members into the program, get into the council, right? So if you have someone that's on your campus that may not be aware of the council, let them know, hey, they're asking for you to join. We need you to join. We want to hear your voice. But not only that, because this council and its members will be great advisors for the remainder of the different commissions, it's important that we have membership that we can begin to have seats at the table, having discussions, building out agendas, and of course, making sure the threat of diversity, equity, inclusion is th done throughout the APLU association. So for me, I think the first thing is making sure you let the information be known to your, to your community, campus community, making sure you have someone from your campus represented in this uh, council and getting involved. So I would say that that will be some of the easiest ways to really make sure that we're building out this council. That's great. It's a great vision for the, what's coming up. So we have a few more minutes. Um, any final thoughts or comments that you'd like to share about things that you're doing on your campus or um, the anything that CDEI is doing? Well, I will say, first of all, I wanna thank uh, the leadership of, of, of CDEI uh, for their the committee, uh, the, the um, Oh, my goodness, to the, the actual executive committee, excuse me, uh, and letting them know that it is very appreciated all the hard work that went into the years of a commitment to making this an actual council, making certain that we are able to work alongside our presidents and different provosts and other things about our campus to ensure that they also understand that DEI is something that is not just a trend, but is a part of all of our, our land written mission. Um, and, and we wanna make sure that we have a strong voice in continuing to elevate that, that throughout our, 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 our universities. So one of the things I would say to you is, um, you know, get some rest. We have a great year ahead. I mean, the reality is we've been kind of quarantined for the last two years. Some of us may have been hybrid, some of us may have been remote, but we're ready to get back to one another, connecting and having real true dialogue. And so I'm excited to see what's to come, not just from the council, but from APLU and all of our universities as we continue to grow.